All right. Is there a website where speaker measurements are published centrally? Yeah, I have them myself. No, hold on. Um, a lot of us, well, us, me and Amir, uh, will provide Pierre. Uh, gosh, what's his website? Homeboy's in here. He could probably remember too. 2034. Yeah, data 2034. Let me see if I can. So it's just like a year. It's talking about a huge database where I could just. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. I would love to what? have a database <clears throat> where I could just say, I want a bookshelf speaker that can play to 35 hertz. Show me, show me what's there. And then I want it to be under this price point. Like, yeah, narrow it down. yeah. that'd be kind of cool. So, so what I do is I send my data to Pierre. Um, mm -hmm. He's in France, I believe. And Amir does the same, or I guess Amir posts his data and then Pierre downloads that as well. And once, uh, Pierre gets the data. I'll show you what I'm talking about here because mm -hmm. it'll be easy just to show somebody. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So this is the, where Pierre posts all the data to, and then he'll put a picture up there. He'll put a picture of the uh, the Sean Olive score, which you know, that's a topic that deserves its <laughs> own thing. I've never seen this. What is yeah, the website? Oh, it's great. It's uh, Pierre Albert A U B E T B E R T. GitHub, I, here, I'm just going to paste it. This is way too much. Okay. Um, but the main thing is, is that you can search, but then you can also do like, you can sort. So you can that say. That is awesome. How come not? I mean, I don't know about this. This is the first time I've seen this. I don't know. When I, so when I talked to Sean Olive uh, sometime last year, I mentioned this website to him. Let me throw this up in the chat. That's super real fast. cool. And then if anybody wants to go check it out, they can. But that's a great, that's a great website. Pierre does a really good job. I sent him the data. Almost as soon as I get done measuring something, most of the time, unless I just forget, I got to send him a couple new ones, actually. Wow. Um, but he'll update it. So he'll take that raw data. He'll update it. And then he will go into the site. And let me see if I can give you guys an example here. GitHub.io. Yeah. So he, he will take the raw data, and then he'll kind of replicate what... Um, what Amir and I do. I mean, honestly, it is kind of a, a copy, but he does some extra stuff with it as well. So you can see he takes the data, puts it in C2034 comp format, and then he provides this kind of window of linearity, um, all the normal stuff. But he also, which I think is cool, is he has with EQ, right? So yeah. with EQ, without EQ, and then direct comparisons, you can compare speakers directly, all sorts of prices, just... I mean, tons of stuff. That's cool. Yeah. So, is is there a like? I don't know how you how do you put a numerical value on flatness? Because that's kind oh, of Sean Olive came up with. Um, are we talking about like the preference score? Well, it's saying here from three hundred hertz to ten kilohertz, right? So it's just from that range. How far does it deviate? I mean, how does that work? Oh, you're talking about this? Like uh, it says flatness plus. Plus or minus one point seven dB. Flatness. Like, oh, what if it's all over the place? Like, what if it's constantly up and down, but like only goes plus or minus one point seven? Like, that's not still not good, right? Like, ju just because oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you. I'm sure he probably does it the same way I do. So I'll just give an example real fast. Um, I'll get there eventually. And let's see. I'll have to change the. Uh, I wonder if it could be like calculated in, a, in some kind of uh, area under the curve and then area over. And then what is right. that number? So I, I'm taking the average sensitivity over a range. And the range I'm taking is 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. And then I'm saying the deviation of the speaker is from a, from a certain range up here. I say it's minus 3.7 to plus about 2.7, and that's from 80 hertz to 16 kilohertz. Um, and that's how I calculate it. But yeah, I mean... Yeah, I see. So I see that, right? But is there a yes. numerical value they can say, this is this amount of flatness, right? Right. You want like, like standard deviation, it sounds like. I like think this so. is the average, and then this is the standard deviation from that, right? Yeah, I don't I, I don't that do that. Right okay. Um, while you have this up on the screen. Yeah. When you calculate the plus or minus 3D point, 3 dB point. Mm -hmm. Minus. I wish it was like minus, right? So um, the it's, F3, the minus 3 dB point, is this starting from the point, like at the the peak of where the base No. Starts? Like, or no. is it the center of 
the average between 300 hertz and three kilohertz. Yeah, three yeah, kilohertz. that's what it is. And well, and that's why I've tried to draw this little dash line to show you like the dash line represents the mean sensitivity. And then these dash lines, it probably doesn't show up that well mm-hmm. on the screen right now, but that's what they represent is these two points are taken based on the average sensitivity in the mid range, mm-hmm. right? So if you have a boost here and it extends out, then obviously that that F3 point would be different. Some speakers have a high Q where they boost up through here that's and then it. they fall off a lot more rapidly, you know? So that's kind of what I'm targeting there. Well, it's more because like uh, I was looking at some old measurements of some subwoofers that I did mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, they, you know, they do some weird stuff to make, you know, uh, to make it look like it measures better or whatever. Or, yeah. or the 3dB point is down from this huge bump, let's say. But I can't do from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. So what is the area? What's the range for uh, a subwoofer, right? Yeah, I think I think that's my question. Should I should I be measuring from the peak here or what average? You know, like well, yeah, I think that's personal. I think that's up to you to decide. Um, and and you could say pretty much anything as long as it's reasonable, it would be okay. Um, I think for a subwoofer, you know, if you're going to be generally talking about subwoofers that don't have an issue getting down to 30. Then mm-hmm. I would say make it 30 to 80 hertz would okay. be your mean. Um, okay. But you know, like if if you know that you're going to be testing, like let's say you're a dude and and your main thing is like cheap budget speakers, and you're going to be testing hundred dollar subwoofers, then you're probably going to be lucky to get down to 30. So I would change that range from like 50 to 100, you know, and then then your focus would be on how how quickly does it roll off because it's probably going to be F3 at like. 40 hertz or something. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's just tricky because F3 sounds like a specific number, right? Like this is the F3 and I don't know, I guess, what the standard is. is like where where do you start measuring from? If we're going to say yeah. F3 is the number that we're looking at for a sub, where, do, where are we starting to measure from? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I think I would probably say 30 to 100 hertz because most subwoofers should not have a problem getting flat to 30 anechoic. Mm-hmm. Um, within reason. Okay. So I would probably set it there. You know, if you're talking about 12, 15 inch subwoofers, but if you're talking about 10 inch subwoofers that are on Amazon, then they'd be lucky to get 40 hertz. Mm-hmm. So then you might have to change things. So I, I would, and you could even rate it both ways. To me, and this, this is the same thing we do at work, right? Like no matter what you're doing, as long as it's reasonable and you tell people, and it, that way it, somebody else can say, all right, he's told me how he's calculating it. Yeah, I guess I, I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. In the last review, I'm like, I'll show you both ways. So yeah. I don't know. Why not, which why not do it both ways? I, again, I, I don't personally, I'm not. If anybody has a bone to pick about something like that, then they're worried about the wrong stuff in life. <laughs> Honestly, it, was, man. it was kind of a big difference um, on this particular subwoofer that I was looking at. It was like the monolith, uh, not uh, the SVS 3000 micro, like the dual yeah. eights. And so yeah. if I did it from the peak, uh, you know, the F3 would be somewhere like, I don't know, like 28, 29, 30, hertz, like, you know, but yeah. if I did it from the mean, then it was 23. And so like 23 and 30 is a big difference. And right, right. Yeah. You know I, I think mean? it seems very different to say, oh, F3 is 30. Like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Well, here's, here's the other thing too, is some larger woofers have very high inductance. So once they hit like 80 Hertz on the top end, they're rolling off on the top end pretty quick too. So it might have a low F3, you know, in general, but depending on how you're taking that mean sensitivity, if you're saying 50 or, you know, 30 to 100 hertz or something like that, then that's going to be different than it would be if you were doing 30 to 50 hertz. Mm. So yeah. uh, you're, you're talking about such a small bandwidth that it's hard, I think, to narrow it down. Um, maybe the, the best thing to do would be 50 to 80. Mm-hmm. Average 50 to 80 done because okay. i expect large subwoofers might have high inductance so they're going to start rolling off on the top end early um smaller subwoofers are going to be lucky to hit 40 hertz so that's really going to throw off the mean if i make it go down to 30 for the mean so like i said but as long as you just tell people hey this is how i'm calculating it and if you want to calculate a different way be my guest yeah those are the ones where i usually like i don't know i, th- I think aaron has a review if you want <laughs> if you want the measurements go over there yeah i just Again, these are the whatever makes sense. Whatever makes sense. It doesn't have to be perfect, man. 
as long as you're telling people what you're doing, they can figure it out. What else? Anything else? In- All right. If you would like to join us every week on Mondays at, what time is it? It's about 6 p.m. Central, which is the best time. That's where I am. Make sure you join us at youtube.com slash daily high five. We out.